Good morning, Holy Savior. Welcome to worship on this beautiful morning that God has given us. And whether you are gathering with us this morning in your PJs or your Sunday beds, we are glad you're here with us as we celebrate another day that our God has given us. Another day to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, His love and His presence in our lives. Well, as we gather here just to highlight a number of things for you, want just a little celebration as we've introduced something new during this kind of stay-at-home time. We did introduce the missionary on Tuesdays on Zoom at noon. So we've had two of our missionaries with us as over the past two weeks. We started out with Chelsea Irwin, our very own missionary, on Zoom over in the Czech Republic. And then last week we had Pastor and Linda uh, Becker with us to share with us what they're doing in Africa, and they'll be moving to Tanzania and training missionaries and pastors and encouraging them. And this coming week, we have Sarah Hoon, who will be joining us. She's a missionary in Hong Kong with Mission of Christ Network. Look forward to hearing from her. Zoom, Zoom on noon on Tuesday. Well, again, one of the ways to make sure that you're on top of everything that's going on here is to fill out the online connection card and make sure that you signed up for the emails. Especially because one of the things that we're doing as we are communicating, connecting, and caring is making sure that you are aware of what's going on here. One of the big things, of course, that's going on is that in Nebraska, the governor has loosened the restrictions for some parts of the community, particularly places of worship. However, Lincoln is under a little bit of a different restriction, so while other parts of Nebraska are opening up here over the next week or two weeks, here in Lincoln, we probably have a few more weeks before we can fully open everything up and be in person worship again. We're looking forward to that. So we are working on everything behind the scenes to get that ready to go. So as soon as we have the green light, we can make it happen. So that's why you have to sign up for those emails so we can send you those updates and make sure you know that day and what happens here in the near future. As a part of that, we're also going to be emailing a survey so we can kind of get a feel where everyone's at. We know that some people are eager to be here. As soon as those doors are open, you'll be here. you got a spot. You're going to sit down and be in person worship. Others of you are a little more hesitant about still venturing out. So it gives us an idea, a feel for where everyone is at as we gather here. All right. Are you ready? Two other things coming up this week again. we got a noon Zoom meeting with a missionary, and then we got the National Day of Prayer, so we don't want to forget about that. That is going to be another Zoom meeting, and that invitation went out this last Thursday during the announcements. It's going to go out again as a reminder. Join us on our Zoom for some time of prayer. Now it's time for a little bit of virtual hugging, a little shout-out, some shaking the hands, maybe some chest bumps, you know, get up in your house, give everyone some fist bumps, say a little fist bumps, say hello to my friend Tim and everyone else that's joining us. Wherever you're at, we're so glad you're with us. Let's greet one another in the name of our Savior Jesus. Good morning, everyone. I just got to tell you, I love you all, and I really miss you, and I can hardly wait to the time that we can get together again. For now, let's please join me in prayer. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your great love for us, and we want you to know that our hearts are full of love for you. Please let your Holy Spirit be with us as we offer up praise. Heavenly Father, Wrap your arms around us, for we still fear the coronavirus, COVID-19. Help us look forward to the day coming soon when we can worship you here in person. We pray this in the very name of Jesus. Amen.
After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me, since I remain childless, and the one who will inherit my estate is Elazar of Damascus? And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the <clears throat> Chaldeans, and to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abram brought all these to him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated four hundred years. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterward they will come out with great possessions. You, however, will go to your fathers in peace, be buried in a good old age. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here, for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. When the sun had set and the darkness had fallen, a smoking firepot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram and said, To your descendants I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river of the Euphrates. Father, again, it is great to be with you and to worship our God. As we gather here today, we continue our series, Fear, Faith in Uncertain Times. And again, of course, with COVID-19, there's a lot of uncertainty in our life and our world, but not just with COVID-19. But hey, as we gather here, you know, we've kind of developed a rhythm, right? We have a question and give you a chance to kind of give some feedback on that question. Here's the question. In one word, only one, in one word, what are you most looking forward to in the next 12 months? So in one word, what are you most looking forward to in the next 12 months? Now, if you're like me, I started thinking of, a lot of just one words, like one word I had is worship. I mean, we're worshiping now, but I, being together in worship, as I think about people sitting in the very spots they, they were going to be sitting in, I know it's going to be different, but yet we'll be together. I look forward to that. Or I think about a haircut. It's been a while since I had a haircut, and, you know, it's getting a little longer. How shaggy will I look before I can get a haircut again? Or another one word I can think of is hamburger. You know, I, I'm looking forward to going to one of my, my favorite hamburger restaurants and getting a hamburger there. Now, I ordered one delivered a few weeks ago, and it was good, but it was quite the same as getting that hamburger, eating it, and chatting with the waitress and going out either with my wife or with, with some friends or going out with Tim. Tim and I have got a guarantee that we're going to go out and get a hamburger when things begin a little more normal. The one word, family. You know, I, I look forward to being with some of the family that right now we can't be together with. You know, my mom had planned to be with us for Easter Sunday. We're going to spend some time together. You know, I planned, you know, not knowing how things are going to change here to be with my daughter in the Czech Republic towards the end of the year. Just don't know. What one thing are you looking forward to over the next 12 months? Well, as we do that, let's kind of jump into the text here and a little backstory and who this guy, Abram, is. Just in case you don't know, Abram is also Abraham. You know, later on, God changes his name. But Abram, who is this guy? We use some one-word descriptions. Abraham, 
Abram, is one word, old. This guy was 75 years old when God called him to leave everything behind, everything that he knew, and go to the land where God was going to send him. He was old when God said, trust me, what's going to happen? Abraham, one word, laughed. Abraham laughed at God, so did his wife Sarah, laughed at God's promise, and God heard them. And even though they laughed, God continued to be faithful to his promise. One word to describe Abram, liar. I don't know about you, if you've ever lied. I've lied a few times, maybe more than a few times. You know, we have all lied. Abraham, one of those heroes of our faith, he was a liar. In fact, you know, he lied about his wife when he was getting in trouble, a little bit fearful down in Egypt. He said, oh, this is, not my, this is my sister. He not only lied about his wife being his sister once, but twice. And then maybe the, the one word that really describes Abram, faith. Abraham, when we think about Abraham, we often think about faith. Let's read together these words of Hebrews 11, 8. Faith led Abraham to obey when God called him to go to a place that he would receive as his inheritance. Faith. Faith led Abraham to trust God, to jump out, to leap out into the unknown. So here's a question, and, and, and you give you a few moments here, maybe even as a family, if you've got more folks in your household. How would you define faith? And think about that for just a moment. How would you define faith? Now, one of the, the big you know, elements of faith is trust. You know, you think about one word that describes faith is trust. So one way to think about that is, is like a chair. I don't know how many of you now are sitting down you know, in a chair, but when you go to sit down in a chair, you do what? You trust that that chair is going to hold you, right? That you squat down, you sit down in that chair, that you sit in that chair, and that chair is going to do what it's supposed to do. And, you know, most often chairs do what they're supposed to do, right? Unless somebody pulls it out from underneath you. Though I did have one time when I sat down in a lawn chair, and if you've ever had this experience before, and the chair was, it was old, it was broken, and I didn't know that, and I sat down, and now the whole, everything went up everywhere. It was kind of an exciting mess. A little scary at the time, but the chair didn't do what it had promised to do. But faith is trusting that the thing or the person will do what it's supposed to do. So but we look at our, our, our lives, and if we talk about faith, and, and faith is trust, you know, often in times of uncertainty and fear, in times of uncertainty and fear, we, we, we struggle, we battle with fear and, and doubt and discouragement. So how do we battle with those in the midst of this uncertainty? You see, that, and that's the power of faith. The power of faith is to trust even when we cannot see. It's easy to trust a chair, right? Because a chair you know is going to hold you, well, most of the time. What if you did something like this? And here, you can do this at home today if you want to have a little fun with everyone else, you know, in your household. Um, if you're by yourself, I don't recommend you do this. You, you can put on a blindfold, right, on uh, someone in the household. You could, you know, do a, a blind, you know, trust walk with them. You take turns doing that. Or you could get out some different things to try and blindfold someone and, and see if they trust you to feed them something delicious, maybe not too hot or spicy or disgusting. You know, some trust exercises. Not everyone likes those trust exercises. But, you know, as we look at the various heroes of the Bible, as we talk in this sermon series, we started off with Job, and then we were in Daniel last week, and today we're in Abram, Abraham, and the next week we'll look at Paul. All four of these heroes of our faith are ones that in faith trusted God. But not all the time. In fact, you know, the opening words we hear in Genesis 15 is where Abraham is struggling a little bit in his faith. He's a little uncertain whether, again, like you think about it here, that if God is truly going to be there like he promised. And so this is the first time we hear God say these words to one of his followers. And he says it so many times beyond this. So often he says this, this sense of this promise of being with us. Let's read Abraham's promise from God Genesis 15, 1. Abram, don't be afraid. I am your shield, your very great reward. God says this again and again. Don't 
be afraid. I am with you. Don't be afraid. I will never abandon you. Don't be afraid. The promises that I made you, even if those promises are a long ways off, those are promises I will fulfill. Trust in my faithfulness. So here, you know, and let's give a little backstory to what's going on with Abraham. You know, why is he fearful? Well, one, he had just battled four different kings. And so there's a little bit of a concern that maybe these four kings, one of these kings, you know, might come after him. And so God says, you know, Abraham, don't be afraid. Okay? Abraham, I am with you. Abraham, I am your shield. Again, this is another phrase that God says to his people. Like, I'm your shield, your tower, your refuge, your strength. No matter what you're facing, Abraham, no matter what you are facing, God's promise is I am with you. And that's a promise we can trust. It's a promise God shows us again and again, and most especially in his son, Jesus Christ. So you know, how and when has faith, or not faith, fear, ever immobilized your spiritual life, your faith? Again, we see this with Abram at this moment. You know, four kings, uncertain about whether they're going to come after him. A little uncertain about God's promise because, you know, he doesn't have a son to pass on his inheritance and, and his heritage. You know, the only way they would do that if they couldn't have children is they would you know, take one of his servants, his young servants, and then adopt him like a son. And if you know Abram, you know, even after that, they still don't have one. So he, you know, has a child, a son, with one of his female servants. And God says, that's not the promise I made for you. Talk about being old is when Abraham and Sarah were really, really old now that they actually have their son, Isaac. You know, what we learn from Abraham, we learn a lot from Abraham, but what we really, really learn from Abraham is this. Trusting God takes a lifetime. Trusting God takes a lifetime. It, what I mean is that, that we'll have moments in our faith, you know, that, that fear and uncertainty and apprehensions, they get the best of us and we fail to trust God. But there will also be moments when our faith succeeds. And in moments of uncertainty, in moments of fear and uneasiness, we like Abraham, like David, like Daniel, like Job, we trust God. In fact, Paul writes about this in Romans 4, 3. Let's read together. Abraham believed God, and that faith was regarded as the basis of Abraham's approval by God. So Abraham believed God. Abraham had faith in God. He trusted God, and that faith gave him God's approval. That faith Gave him, as it says, it was credited to him as righteousness. It's the same for us. It's our faith that God works through, that faith that he gives us in his son, Jesus Christ. And that faith in Jesus Christ, you talk about one word. We talk about faith. We talk about who? We talk about Jesus. But this faith in Jesus, this relationship that we have, is an ongoing trust exercise. And trusting God takes a lifetime. Because each and every day is a challenge to our faith to trust God. It's easy to trust God, I know, when things are going really well, when, when there's no real hardships on the horizon, there's no murkiness in our lives. But when we are facing struggles, in the midst of COVID-19, I know I've talked to a number of you, and, I, and, I've, and I'm reading online and reading articles about others who are struggling from, you know, situations of, of abuse and relationships that are hurting and, and people who have lost their jobs. And in the midst of the COVID-19 and this pandemic, there's all these other things going on. And what God says to us, just like he said to Abraham, do not fear. And again, that is not a commandment of God shaking his finger at us. It's a promise of God saying, don't fear because I am with you. Don't fear that I've abandoned you, that I've forgotten you, that I've stopped loving you. I am with you, and I love you always. Now, again, we said one word of what you're looking forward to. Abraham was looking forward to the promises that God gave him. He was looking forward to the promise that God gave him of a son. And, and through that son, the inheritance of this land and, and becoming a great nation. But Abraham saw even beyond that. Abraham saw way beyond the birth of a son and the inheritance of a land that would take generations. Abraham trusted God and God's promise of a savior. Jesus speaks about that in John. Let's read this together. Your father Abraham rejoiced as he looked forward to my coming. He saw it 
and was glad. You see, Abraham, even though he was thousands of years before the birth of Jesus Christ, he looked at God's promise of a Savior, and he trusted God. And so no matter what we are going through, we look beyond the situation we're in, and we see that God is not only with us now, but with us always. It's kind of like, again, we said last week. You know, last week we talked about God does not promise to remove all of our problems, but he promises to be with us in the midst of everything all of our problems, all of our troubles, all of our struggles. He is with us. And each of us comes to a place in our lives, over and over again in our lives, where we feel like God sometimes is pushing us and, and stretching us. And in and, and our faith, you know, we kind of ask ourselves sometimes, and maybe we, we, we even cry out sometimes, can I trust him? And God's promise, God's assurance, again, are the words we hear in Genesis 15.1. Let's read this together again. Abram, don't be afraid. I am your shield, your very great reward. Now, I want to read these words again, but this time what I want you to do, and you shout it out whether you're by yourself or whether you're with a whole host in your family, sitting in your PJs or your Sunday best. I want you to put your name in place of Abram. I, I want you to hear these words of God to you. So let's read this together again. So I would say James, right? So James, don't be afraid. I am your shield, your very great reward. God is with you. In the midst of the uncertainties and the fears and the apprehensions and the brokenness and the pain and the struggles, God is with you. He will never abandon you. And we most especially see that in Jesus. The one word, the one person, Jesus who went to the cross, who suffered and died and rose, that we'd have life in him, that rises from the dead so that we know that not even death can keep God's love and God's presence from us, that he is with you no matter what you're facing right now. And that doesn't remove the problems and the struggles and the uncertainties, but it gives you the confidence and faith to trust his promise, a promise that Jesus makes to his followers as he sends them out into the world. I am with you. He is with you right now. Remember this. There are times in our faith we will falter and struggle and fail. But God is always faithful. And our trust in God takes a lifetime. God knows that and he loves us through that entire journey of life, of trusting him and knowing and being loved by him. So here's a challenge for us as we go forward this week. The challenge is this. How is God calling you to let go of your fear and live in faith today? How is God calling you to let go of your fear? So think, you've got to think about what fear you might have right now, whether it's COVID-19, whether it's with a job, a relationship, whatever that fear is. Maybe it's a little fear right now. Maybe it's a really big fear. How you let go of that fear and live in faith today? And there's some practical things you can do. I like doing practical things. I mean, maybe you write that fear on, you know, a, a postcard or if you got a brick or something outside, write it on a brick and, and take that and just hold that fear and say, I'm going to let go of this fear, especially if it seems really heavy. Get something that's heavy and take it out and drop it somewhere so you don't break anything. Don't drop it on, you know, the floor inside the house and say, God, help me to let go of this fear and to trust you, to know that, God, you are holding on to me, to know you are never leaving me alone. Maybe you write the words of Genesis 15, 1 down so you see those words this week. Or the words of Matthew 28, Jesus has promised, I am with you. So that you are reminded again and again that you are not alone. That God is with you. That God is faithful to his promise to love you and uphold you. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of this amazing day and for your amazing love for us in Jesus Christ. Lord, if we're honest, there are times and things that cause us to be fearful and uncertain. Lord, you also help us in faith to trust you. So Lord, we pray for each and every one of us this morning that you would help us to trust you in faith, to know that you are faithful to all of your promises, faithful to be with us, faithful to love us, faithful to be with us through all that we face each and every moment of our lives. We pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. This time we use these ancient words of the Apostles' Creed to profess his faith and a God who is faithful, we confess together. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now come before God to confess our sins. Together we confess. Merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways. Too often we have followed the desires of our own hearts. We have left undone those things which we ought not to have done, and have done the things which we ought not to have done, and there is nothing good in us. We confess all our faults and sins to you, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, spare us, and restore us according to your promises declared in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hear these words, this promise of God's forgiveness. Again, God is faithful to his promise to forgive us, to forgive you, no matter what those sins are. The almighty and merciful God has forgiven you all your sins and cleanses you from all wrongful deeds. All of your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and God's people say, Amen. This time we return to the Lord, portion of the gifts he's given to us. Again, our gifts to the Lord are a response to his faithfulness, to his love and his presence with us in his son, Jesus Christ. And you can share those gifts through a check or cash. You can go online and set up to do that giving online. You can also go to a text giving at 84321. We've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, and enter your email address. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it. We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the Login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. And if you switch over to the My Profile page, you can update your contact info, link to a bank account, and review your giving history. To get started, visit our website or download the Church Center app in your Android or Apple App Store. Good morning again. Would you please join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you knowing that whatever the fears we face, you are beside us in helping us through the bad situations like you did for Abraham. We continue to ask you to help the world overcome the COVID-19 virus. We pray for all the families that have lost loved ones because of it. Jesus, we want to lift up all that are on our prayer list. We also lift up Janine uh, Nolte's mother, as her health is failing, also for Elvira, who has an infection in her leg, and for Michaela, as she is in hospice care, and for John, as he suffers from mental health. Lord, if we had our will, we would ask that you would touch and heal them, but we ask that your will be done, not ours. Lord, wrap your arms around them and hold them close. Lord, we also just heard this morning that Deb Marino is not doing well. We pray for her. We also want to pray for all the missionaries that your Holy Spirit would work through them to bring many to believe in, your, in you as their Lord and Savior. Amen. Now please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held. Savior, before we wrap up, we need your help to stay connected in such a disconnected time. Please go to holysavior.org and click on the link to fill out our new online connection card. Then simply enter your name, email, date, and let us know how we can serve you. If you can do this during or soon after joining us for live stream worship, it greatly helps us in our effort to effectively communicate, connect, and care for the Holy Savior family. Again, thanks. Stay safe and God bless. Again, it is great to have worshiped with you, and I look forward to here in the next number of weeks when we can gather in person again. So again, a few things, reminders of that. Make sure you sign up for that email, do the connection card, so we can communicate with you all the updates that are coming up with that. We're going to send out an email with a link for a survey seat. Please fill that out. Be honest. We're not going to ask who you are. Give us a feel for where everyone is at. And as soon as the mayor gives us the green light, we want to be ready to go so we can implement things and communicate to you how things look as we can gather in sight, on site for worship again. We'll continue doing the online worship. We've been doing that for a year. So that will continue as well. 
Anyways, as we gather here again today, you know, just focus on this one thing. As you think about trust and faith in God, remember it's a lifelong journey. And God is faithful to his grace and promise to you, to love you, to forgive you. He is always with you. God's richest blessings are with you on this beautiful day. Stay safe. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. God's blessings.